is what, seven and a half? I say it's not, it's not that easy to stop. Believe it or not, I'm standing in the middle of a field. I'm in the Lincolnshire Fenlands, and it's been deliberately flooded with water so that the local Fenland people can skate on it. Now, it's about two foot deep underneath me, and the people here have told me it's perfectly safe. And I believe them. The first man I met was local skating organiser, Doug Bieber. So you, oh, you can't decide when you're going to do it. Obviously, you have to wait until it all, uh, yes, all this we, freezes we up. We have to wait until the ice is of sufficient strength to uh, yeah. be able to hold the race. And then we judge and, and then offer it to the National Skating Association. To prepare the ice for the national championships, all the surface snow has to be cleared and the bumps smoothed out. Then the circular course is marked out with wooden blocks. It's a quarter of a mile long and divided into two lanes. Meanwhile, I put on a pair of racing skates. They're very low cut, just like football boots. Right, I've got it. Yeah. Thanks, Doug. Right? Yeah. I think I've got to do them a bit tighter, oh. really, haven't I? Uh, so I go up tight. Oh no, you're. Yeah, that's right. Come on. Speed skating, can you? I can't remember the last time I skated, but it felt like a long time ago. I had a double problem. The racing skates didn't give my ankles any support at all, but then neither did my coach. Stop! He was off across the frozen fen as if he'd been born with skates on. You could see as he glided with ease across the ice why he'd been a Fenden racing champion when he was a young man. I can't seem to get them straight. Well, you see, you, you, what you have to do, you're letting your ankles go. Yeah. You, you see, look, you're doing that. Yeah. That's no good. You've got to keep upright. See, right. look, you're on the, on the blade. Yeah. And so your weight must be in the centre of the skate. It's very hard to do that. That's right. Now, come on. Keep your weight. That's it. Don't let your ankle go over. Yeah. You are doing... See, look, you're doing that. Yeah, I can't help it. <laughs> Staying upright on a slippery surface is a tricky business. But the combination of the racing skates and a dodgy ankle meant I could hardly keep my balance at all. After just a few minutes, I had to stop because it was just too painful. going on in here. Yes, that's the root of the problem. And four weeks ago, half the American football team fell on my ankle. But it still hasn't repaired. So, um, unfortunately, I'm cropped to skating today. So I shall um, have to find something more constructive to do while the championships are on. Baston Fen Below Zero didn't seem too inviting. But Fen skating is big news in these parts. There are spectators of all ages, and the competitors come from all over the country. Skating originated in 1879. Most of the competitors in those days happened to be farm labourers. The first lady competitor was Nellie Slater. She competed in the 30s. And Albert Tebbit won the cup three times in a row in 1902, so he got to keep it. The competition then, of course, was cupless. Fortunately, King Edward VII presented the King's Cup, and that has changed hands every year to this very day from 1905. Thank you, Miss On your marks. There are two contestants in each heat doing six laps of the course and changing lanes halfway. They don't race against each other, but against the clock. Steve Humber, last year's winner in blue, was trying for the fastest time to get into the final. <laughs> While they raced, I had a word with some of the spectators. Could you explain the meaning of your hat? Because it, it doesn't seem like your original snow-type hat. Well, it is. It's a Norwegian hat. As you, as you see, I'm, I'm a Norwegian fan, and, and um, 
I, I like wearing Norwegian hats. It certainly added a bit of colour to the landscape. Meanwhile, Steve was skating so fast that as he crossed the line, his opponent was only just getting the bell for the last lap. Congratulations, Steve. How was it for you? A little tight. They, I heard them shouting nine seconds slow. Does that mean you're... you're no, I went from the time of uh, 3.36. I was nine seconds fast. Nine seconds fast, they Faster. were shouting. So it's cool. Are you all right then? <laughs> He is. He's the fastest one up now. But even faster than Steve was Nottingham man Stuart Horsepool with a time of 4 minutes 26 seconds. As long as no one else did a better qualifying time, Stuart and Steve would be in the final. Stuart, you've got the fastest qualifying time. What do you think of your chances? Uh, reasonably well. Um, we've got myself and Steve Humber are in the final, uh, the last of the finals. So depends on what time Alan does now. Um, that's Alan going to pass now, yeah. Um, we have to beat his time. It's on times, not on positions, you see. Everyone in the crowd waited eagerly to see who would be the 1986 winner of the King's Cup. On your marks. Steve knew it would be hard to beat Stuart because he was already indoor champion. He chased him all the way, but on the final lap, Steve's legs began to tire and Stuart took the lead. This is Stuart, way out in front, and his right arm's really swinging. When he gets to that bottom corner, he'll start swinging both arms. There they go, both swinging back and forth. He's really going to give it his all as he comes up to the line. He's on the last bend. There's probably 10, 12 seconds to go at the end of this race. Steve's doing his best to catch up, but it's a lost cause for him now. And as he comes up to the final line, has he won? We'll have to check the times. We don't know. The ch crowd are cheering. It's all very exciting. And he's crossed the line. Stuart Horsepaw is won. That was the last race. There was just one we've, novelty we've got event left. Mr. Peter Duncan and Mr. Paul French. Uh, Mr. Peter Duncan is going to race. Uh, he has a bad ankle and he has never raced before, but we're very pleased that he's a game competitor and he's going to have a go. I shall say timekeepers ready. Yes. On your marks, then I shall fire. Right, hang on. This, this is my aerodynamics. <laughs> timekeepers ready. On your mark. Even wearing figure skating boots, which gave my ankle more support, it still wasn't easy standing up, never mind racing against the clock. As I approached the line, the timekeeper shouted out my time for the first circuit. 2.35? Is that like you to lap in? It took me as long to do my first lap as Stuart had taken to do half the course. But I can keep this face up and despite an arm support from Paul, I still couldn't keep my feet. <laughs> my ankle held out for all six laps, but as I came up to the line, I couldn't stop. <laughs> as I picked myself up off the ice, I didn't need anyone to tell me, bad ankle or not, that I'll never win the King Edward VII Cup. Come on, you! Yeah. <laughs> oh. 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 oh.